Oh, I guess you heard that alert too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that? This is the gun that I had in front of me. This is the gun that I own. I realized that this was the option that I had at the time, but there are better options out there, which is why we put together the top five pistols for when crap has hit the fan. Welcome back everybody, Clint today with Classic Firearms, here to talk about another one of those uh, situations that you should probably really take into consideration and think about, SHTF, right? We all know the phrase, we've heard the term, Kaya and I recently did a video about different rifles that maybe you'd want to use in a SHTF situation. We talked about a zombie apocalypse with Aaron and Kaya not too long ago. Well today I'm here to bring you top five pistols for that SHTF situation. Now of course, when you take these into consideration, you think, well, what, what situation defines it has hit the fan, right? It could simply just be, well, you're concealed carrying one day and now all of a sudden you've got to use your concealed carry firearm because somebody is trying to do you some sort of bodily harm or hurt those around you, whatever it might be, right? And therefore, maybe I wouldn't want a Desert Eagle, uh, but perhaps I'd want my SIG 365. Or, if I do have a vehicle running at me, maybe my SHTF pistol in that case would be that 50 Action Express Desert Eagle because I want to take out that engine block, you know what I mean? So there's all sorts of different situations, so keep that in mind when we hit this list. So let's go ahead and start it off with something very controversial on our number five. <clears throat> the 1911. 45 ACP and eight rounds because who needs capacity when you can just blow limbs off with the 45 cartridge, right? Mmm. Ain't that false. So anyway, let's just go ahead and talk about the 1911 because I know a lot of you are like, okay, I'm clicking off this video. This guy's got a 1911 on his top five list for guns that hit the fan. Just wait till number three. But I will tell you right now, there's a reason why the 1911 is here. Because first of all, this gun, and I'm talking about an all metal frame 1911 like the Springfield Operator that you see right here, which is a fantastic shooting gun. I love my Colt Railgun. I actually have several Colt 1911s. I do love 1911s. They're just not always like my go-to for different situations. There is limited capacity. There's the weight you have to take into consideration. 45 is an excellent caliber, but I believe 9mm does you know, just as good at the end of the day when it comes to eliminating a threat, whatever it might be. So. Why is it even on the list? Because let's think about this again in these different situations and scenarios that you might be talking about. Let's say it's just one-on-one -on -one home intruder type of thing. 45 ACP I think is definitely a great round for close quarters because you definitely have the power behind it. And on top of that, well, the, the capacity isn't there, but there are other options out there in 45 like the HK USP that has a greater capacity than a traditional 1911 or like my beloved FNX 45 tactical that you see right here that's got you know 45 rounds of you know of 45 rounds 15 rounds of 45 you know you suppress you know you can with the threaded barrel suppressor height sights already red dot you know picatinny for a light all that type of fun stuff it's great it's awesome it's cool but coming back to this there's no plastic on this gun there's nothing polymer about it other than maybe the grips and so if you needed to use it as something else like a uh, hammer or let's just call it a, a, a blunt object, uh, you, you've got that, all right? Again, I don't know what the situation you might be thinking of when it comes to needing a 1911, but it could be there. And on top of that, 1911s are sold everywhere. And 90% of the time, I would argue, those parts are gonna be interchangeable. So if you need to go to your local gun shop for extra parts, they're probably gonna have them for 1911s, which makes this a Pretty reasonable option for a shit has hit the fan sidearm if you need it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. And now let's roll into something with much more modularity and capacity into our number four pick. For the next pick, I decided to bring Aaron in on this one because we all know he loves, as do I, the SIG P320. And of course, we like it quite a bit because of its modularity. I do like the way it feels and its ergonomics quite a bit. I know it gets a lot of hate and it might be infamous for a reason or two, but as far as I can tell, 
Yeah, we're good. So, hey, how about that? Anyway, by the way, all firearms are cleared and safe before we start recording. Uh, so, <laughs> with that though, what are some of the reasons you like about the 320? Um, like you said, the modularity. Um, if the S does hit the fan, I don't know if I can say it, shit does hit the fan. It's something that you're gonna be able to find different parts to it. You know, the mags will, especially when you go with the extended mags, they will fit in all the um, options you have with the 320. Um, your drop-in system, let's say your lower half, for whatever reason, a polymer, you use it for a hammer one day because you ran out of ammo, you can just switch this out. It takes you about a minute right. to get things back up and running um, when it comes to that. Uh, so I just feel as if it's something that you're gonna be able to run into gun stores, get parts if you need it. If somebody else has a part that you need, you're gonna be able to find it fairly quick here. Yeah, and so. with how many different law enforcement agencies are going to this, uh, you're gonna probably find mags laying yeah. everywhere. And on top of that, I've noticed that pretty much any gun shop you walk into now, it's hard not to find components or you know different frames and right. modules for the 320. Right, right. You know, if you want to go with the the carry, the compact, the full size, you got all of that. The different slide slides. You know, I mean, you, you've got all these different options, and which again makes it pretty versatile yep. if you need one pistol to kind of do it all, right? right? Correct. Now, I know you don't appreciate it, you know, being a little bit lower on my list. Yeah, I didn't appreciate that at all, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Not in an arm wrestling match. Anyway, let's move on to our number three pick. Next up on the list, well, capacity and modularity and all those cool things we talked about before with the 320 pretty much goes right out the window. However, if your family might be involved in organized crime and a, uh, let's just say, a conflicting family, uh, decided to try to take a hit out on your dad and the chief of police was in on it and you needed to go ahead and try to uh, eliminate those guys at an Italian restaurant, a good 38 Special Revolver might be the tool for you. I mean, again, depends on SHTF. What is your definition of shit is it the fan? You know what I'm saying? Uh, if you're not catching the movie reference, I, I don't know what to tell you. John. Uh, but anyway, a revolver, I do believe, belongs on the list. Maybe not as like a primary sidearm or anything like that, but as a good backup gun or something as a good standoff gun. Because here's why, in the words of Clint Smith, or at least the wisdom from Clint, Clint Smith, you can jab this revolver into somebody that might be attacking you, on top of you, whatever else it is, and you can get these rounds off without there being any type of functionality issues. If you were to try to do that with a traditional pistol, let's bring back the 320 we were just talking about, for instance. Again, everything's all clear. And I wanted to press this into somebody that was attacking me, trying to kill me, whatever it might be, get them off of me, and now all of a sudden, their body comes into contact with the muzzle of my gun. It is out of battery, and it will not go bang until that is clear. You don't really have to worry about that with a revolver because quite simply, you can put that up against anything and pull the trigger and it's gonna run for you. So again, as a good little backup gun, I think it has its place. Also, revolvers can be found just about anywhere. 38 Special, 357, 22, 45, 9 mil. There's a lot of different calibers and chamberings for revolvers that make ammo, I think, a reasonable thing to find as well. Again, as we've talked about already, 45, 9 mil. We're gonna be talking about very popular and common rounds. But let me know what you think. Do you think number three is a little too high for revolvers? Do you think maybe it actually needs to be a little bit more high up on the list, a little bit more sought after? I mean, if you ask me, 38 Special is a great little round. It still is very good at what it needs to do. And this is a nice compact size that you might need to conceal either in your waistline or behind a toilet, like Michael Corleone did. Uh, so just let me know what you guys think. I mean, ultimately, the reason it's number three on our list is because if we started this list with a number five being a 1911 and then a number four being a revolver, you'd think this channel was just full of fuds and that's obviously not the case. Anyway, let's talk about our number two. Number two, the Smith & Wesson m and 9. Why? Because like we talked about a little bit earlier with the 320, law enforcement agencies all over utilize the Smith & Wesson m and 9. So therefore, what's available? Parts, components, and I think more importantly, magazines. Magazines are all over the place for the m and series of guns. And these guns are you know, actually have a really good track record and are very proven and very reliable guns. And they feel great and are super ergonomic to shoot. So, and also, well, you know, if 
you find yourself in very, very cold weather and it gets frozen, it apparently still works too. So, I mean, there's that. Uh, thanks, Grantham, for that. But anyway, the MP9 is just a really popular sidearm for a lot of America's law enforcement agencies. And quite frankly, it makes sense for all the reasons I mentioned before. With that, of course, there's all sorts of different models that you can find out there. Some that have optics cut, some that don't, some that are an FTE, some that are a little bit more compact, full size, Picatinny, all that type of fun stuff that you're looking for to make sure that well, it's pretty much gonna be set up however you wanna run it for whatever, again, your mission might dictate, whatever that mission might be. Again, if it's just carrying a pistol, just to have a backup. That, that, that looks pretty solid to me. If you need a primary pistol to go to, that looks pretty solid to me also. So there's all sorts of different options or different roles that this gun can play, and it'll roll, it'll, it'll do that effectively. It'll do everything you need it to do well, which is why it's number two on our list, but not number one. And with that, of course, you guys know there's always an honorable mention. And today I want to talk about the 92 FS, the Beretta 92, or, you know, also the Beretta M9. This is the uh, M9A4 we've got over here, which is pretty sweet also. But there's something to be said about the 92 FS because, again, this has been a military pistol, a law enforcement pistol for decades. And parts, components, magazines, again, also chambered in 9mm, they are everywhere so if you find yourself needing to upgrade or replace repair whatever it might be you might be able to do that with ease uh, when it comes to this gun now a lot of people will say well the m9 had a locking block issue you know people were breaking those all the time and that's just because people didn't actually know how to maintain their guns and when you think about the people that were breaking them that's because it's a lot of military personnel and the armorers weren't doing their job of making sure that the recoil spring wasn't actually getting so worn that now this is just beating up against itself the gun was ultimately destroying itself because well that recoil spring no longer had the tension it needed to actually soften that below. So with that being said, number two, the Smith Wesson MP9, honorable mention, the Beretta M9, and now let's roll into our number one pick. Number one, if you're wondering where Glock is on the list, well, you found it. The Glock 19 specifically for my number one shit has hit the fan pistol. And here's why. Glock is undeniably reliable. As long as you don't start uh, Gucciing them out too much, cutting them up too much, replacing internals and doing all sorts of stuff that just quite simply isn't necessary. But the cool factor is there. The gun looks cool, right? I mean, we all want our Glock to look like this, right? But here's something uniquely different about this gun. It runs very, very well and effectively. The moment you start actually lightening the slide so much, the moment you start lightening up the internals, things like that, you're ultimately, every time you make a modification, removing that Glock reliability a piece at a time. So just keep that in mind. If somebody says, oh my God, I spent $1,000, $2,000 on my Glock and now it runs like crap. Well, what, did, what, what did Glock tell you to do? Don't touch it. That's what they told you to do. And it ran just fine before, right? So there you have it. Now. The Glock 45, I think, is probably one of the best, if not the best Glock made to date. Yeah, this is as close to perfection in all the generations of perfection Glock has made. This is as close to perfection as they've gotten it. And it still needed to be modified. Anyway, with that, the 19, however, and the reason why this is number one on my list, specifically the 19, is because for one, magazine interchangeability. You can put 17 round mags, you can put any other Glock magazine in it, ultimately as long as it's chambered 40 cal or 9 mil, and it's gonna run great. The Glock 17, however, or the 45, which has the extended grip, won't take 19 mags, right? Which is a little bit of a problem because a lot of law enforcement agencies also use the 19, and if you need more magazines and one of yours broke and you run up on a, I don't know, again, I'm thinking, zombie apocalypse, nuclear apocalypse, we're probably closer to the latter, uh, but maybe you run up into a law enforcement uh, building, a police department, and you're like, hey, you know, well, I wonder if they got any extra stuff laying around in their armory or whatever, and they do, and it's a bunch of 19 mags, but you got a 17, hopefully you can find a 19 laying around that's gonna work for you. Or, again, if shit has really hit the fan, a little Dremel tool or a pocket knife might take a little bit longer, or a saw might do really well to just cut the grip and start running 19 mags if that's the case. Because like I said, your Glock 19, 
will run 17 round mags and others without a problem. Does it look right? No, but who cares if you're sending more rounds down range? Works for me. So that's one of the reasons. Also, if we've already talked about the reliability, this entire conversation today, we've also talked about parts availability, magazine availability, the aftermarket support, and also the local gun shop support for Glock is huge. You're gonna find components, parts, pieces, again, holsters, whatever you might think you need, you're gonna find it for this gun. And that's all there is to it. Now, hopefully you're already prepared way beyond that and you're not running to your local gun shop to find these different types of parts, pieces, or even the pistol itself uh, when bad stuff starts to happen. Hopefully you're way ahead of that. But if you find yourself in a situation where you've already prepared, but something went wrong and you need that part or piece, maybe you can find it locally. If not, maybe you got some spares laying around. Get prepared. So we'll leave it at that. Let me know what you guys think about this list. And I'm sure, I'm sure you might be wondering too, like, oh my goodness, that's a pretty cool looking Roland special type of uh, Glock here. This is a Glock 45 Trigicon RMR. It's the Radiant Afterburner. That's right. Radiant Afterburner. We've got the Surefire X300 Ultra. And who did the slide? Jaegerworks, right? Jaegerworks. Jaegerworks slide. What's the sights again? Those are Dawson Precision. Yeah, these things are sweet. So we got co-witness happening, things like that. I am definitely a big fan of this one. Like, if I were to build out a Glock 45, it'd probably be identical to this. This thing's awesome. So there you have it. That's our list for top five shit has hit the fan pistols. Again, we did this in our last SHTF video. What is your definition of shit has hit the fan? As I've mentioned before, that can change in an instant. It could be a home invasion. Then all of a sudden it could be one of your family members is hurt. Do you have the knowledge and the gear the know-how ultimately to apply first aid, basic first aid. How about applying a tourniquet? I think that's something we really lose out on. We'd like to talk about these scenarios, like to talk about the guns and the tactical side of things, but in reality, go to a CPR class and lay off the McDonald's. Anyway, God bless you guys. We'll see you next time at Classic Firearms. And don't forget to head on over to cfcontest.com to see all the kind of cool stuff we've got going on over there. You know, if you want to like shoot one of these guns that we have up on the wall at no cost to you. See you soon.